Introduction. I am Rika Takagi from University of Tsukuba, Japan. Antibiotics are effective for the treatment of infectious diseases. However, the effective range of diseases is limited for antibiotic. The drug sensitivity test has been conducted to choose the most eff effective antibiotic for each patient using 96 per plate. This figure shows the conventional method. First, the blood or saliva is sampled from a patient, and the bacteria are cultured on a well plate about a week until colonies are formed. But the sample volume is limited, and the number of pathogenic bacteria contained in the sample is usually very small. Therefore, it is necessary to increase the cell density to a detectable level by forming colonies on a well plate. However, this step is very time consuming, and the delay of prescription may result in serious diseases such as lung inflammation and the emergence of the multiple drug resistance bacteria. Therefore, it is the shortening of the pre-incubation time is critical for rapid drug sensitivity test. The objective of this study was to develop a micro device for rapid determination of the minimum injury concentration of antibiotics against bacteria. This figure shows the steps in our test. First, the sample of milliliter order is obtained from patient. Because the pathogenic bacteria are very few, the bacteria are concentrated by centrifugation. Then the supernatant is removed, and the remaining cell solution of 5 microliter is, in is injected to the device. For the next step, we observe the growth of bacteria with two methods, COCRM technique and electrochemical impedance measurement, explained later. With this device and methods, the measurement can be studied without waiting for formation of colonies and determine the most effective antibiotics within a day. In this study, we seeded bacteria in independent culture chambers by simple operation. This figure shows the structure of the device. The device consisted of a PDMA substrate with two flow channels and eight culture chambers and a cover glass to seal the structure. The volume of each, of each chamber was 0.36 microliter. This figure shows the seeding steps, and this is a movie. First, the cell suspension solution is dropped onto a solution inlet here and introduced into flow channel 1 by reducing air pressure using a cylinder connected to port 1. Then, the solution withdrawn into each chamber by reducing air pressure in flow channel 2 using a cylinder connected to port 2. Subsequently, the air pressure must be applied from port 1 to remove the excess solution remaining in flow channel 1 from solution inlet. The culture chambers were filled with the solution within only 20 seconds. This particular seeding step is based on the change of the interfacial free energy. This figure shows the change of the interfacial free energy accompanied with the movement of the solution in the chamber. The direction of the force that works to, to the vapor liquid interface is indicated with an arrows. In moving solution to the interior, the free energy initially increases and saturates. Therefore, the air pressure must be applied to this region. However, once the solution reaches the, reaches the narrowing portion, the free energy decreases. Therefore, the solution moves spontaneously to the narrowest portion without applying air pressure. The small lumbar structure that connected to the end of the chamber was effective to avoid the overflow of the solution to flow channel 2. In this region, the free energy rapidly increases, so the solution does not enter this region without applying air pressure. All the chamber were filled were filled with the solution by simply maintaining negative pressure. And to monitor the growth of bacteria, we first used continuous optimizing confocal reflection microscopy, or COCLM. By COCLM, the growth of bacteria can be visualized, and the volume was quantified non-invasively using confocal reflection microscope. However, it needs an expensive instrument, and the clinical application is not realistic. Therefore, we also tried the electrochemical impedance measurement by adapting a sensing electrode to the device. I will first explain COCLM used for comparison. 
This figure on the left shows the conventional flow sense detection. It needs staining for observation, so continuous monitoring was impossible. On the other hand, COCLM can visualize the bacteria as 3D images. The COCLM images was analyzed using a program that developed for this purpose. Furthermore, the volume of microorganisms per unit culture surface area was determined as biovolume. Then we observed the growth of bacteria in the device without any antibiotics. We used E. coli k strain as bacteria. These pictures show COCLM images taken every three, every three hours after injection. The increase in the number of cells was clearly observed. We also analyzed the biovolume based on these images. The light figure shows that the Light figure shows that the change of biovolume in every three hours. And E. coli grew, e. coli grew almost at the same rate in all the chambers. For next step, the gentamicin of different concentrations was immobilized in form of the freeze-dry matrices in each chamber. The procedure for immobilization was shown on the left. An antibiotic solution containing 0.58% borosilicate albumin was dropped onto each chamber before bonding PDMS and grass substrate and freeze dried. The freeze dried matrix was, was very porous and dissolved in a solution within a second. To confirm that the components of each chamber did not mix during the seeding steps, the Freeze dried matrices with fluorescence of a series of concentrations was immobilized in each chamber. And we measured the fluorescence intensity with, in each chamber with the same manner. The linear relationship was observed between fluorescence intensity and concentrations of fluorescence. Therefore, no cross contamination was observed in each chamber. Then, we observed the growth of E. coli cells under the different concentrations of gentamicin in the device. The influence of gentamicin was clearly observed. These pictures show COCLM images taken 12 hours after injection. The growth of E. coli cells was inhibited with, by increasing concentrations of gentamicin. And this light figure shows the change of biovolume in every three hours after injection based on these images. The increase, the, the growth of bacteria was inhibited at a concentration higher than one microgram per milliliter. Based on the result, the minimum E3 concentration of gentamicin against E. coli K12, K12 strain was determined to be one microgram per milliliter. And we also determined the minimum E3 concentration of gentamicin using 96 well plate as conventional drug sensitivity test. The result was consistent with that obtained using the micro device. So, so next, we conducted uh, impedance measurement using the device with sensing electrodes. This figure shows the structure of the device for impedance measurement. The PDMS flow channel structure was the same as that of previous device. However, thin frame three electrode system was formed on the glass substrate. The electrodes for detection includes a gold electrode as a working electrode, a silver silver chloride electrode as a reference electrode, and a gold electrode as an auxiliary electrode. For impedance measurement, two electrode configuration was often used. But we used three electrode configurations, not only to investigate the influence of the increase in the number of cells, but also to measure the change of the dissolved oxygen concentration consumed by respiratory activity of bacteria. We first determined the potential at which current was, uh, which current can be clearly observed in presence or absence of bacteria. This figure shows the cyclic polytomograms. The distinct difference was observed at lower than minus 0.5 volt 
So we applied minus 0 0.8 volt to the working electrode. And this figure shows the dependence of in measured impedance on frequency. More distinct difference was observed at low frequency. So the measurement was carried out at 1,000 hertz. Then this light figure showed a change of impedance at 1,000 hertz when equalizers were cultured, on, uh, cultured in the device without gentamicin. The very similar change was observed in all three chambers. Then we conducted the same measurement with different concentrations of gentamicin. The growth of bacteria was inhibited at concentrations higher than one microgram per milliliter. In other words, the, the minimum entry concentration of gentamicin was determined to be one microgram per milliliter. And this result agrees with those obtained the other two methods. In conclusion, a portable micro device for rapid determination of the minimum entry concentration of antibiotics can be realized. The minimum entry concentration of gentamicin against E. coli cells was determined using new observation technique without process labeling and fixation. Furthermore, the growth of bacteria could be measured without expensive instrument by impedance measurement. For the next future plan, we will fabricate a device that will deal with more antibodies simultaneously. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>